Okay, so look, I know you've got a lot of questions and we are committed to getting you facts. One thing we're hearing a lot about is the fact that one of the confirmed cases here in North Texas is a three-year-old child, something we don't see much. So uh, Dr. Julie Linderman has been kind enough to come into the studio with us. She's a pediatrician. What can you tell us about the rarity of a child mm -hmm. um, being named as uh, someone who is a confirmed case of COVID-19? So I think there are a couple issues to consider there. So one, possibly kids are less likely to get the illness altogether, um, but there's also another very strong possibility that kids get the virus, but that their manifestations of the illness are markedly less severe. Explain why. So we believe that it's possibly because kids have a very robust immune system. So they're constantly fighting various viruses that look somewhat like COVID-19. Mm. So they have some cross immunity when they actually are faced with the illness. But the other possibility is that adult immune systems that actually should technically be more robust and more complex actually mount too big of a response to COVID mm. and that inflammatory cascade that follows actually causes organ and tissue damage. Mm. Um, so both of those theories have been proposed and I think we're gonna have to watch and wait to sort of see what we can learn, you know, as more data presents itself. Yeah. But I will say that we can extrapolate some information from all the cases we've seen around the world mm -hmm. and kids really are not affected to the same degree. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, to be completely honest with you, in my practice, my greatest concern is still flu mm -hmm. when it comes to the pediatric population. Sure. And the main reason for that is because this flu season is on par with the 2009 flu pandemic yeah. with regards to the pediatric population. So what do you tell parents who come in and say, you know, should we travel for spring break or mm -hmm. should we go to the carnival or the festival or whatever? It's a really tough question right now. And you know, the last thing I wanna do is be cavalier, mm -hmm. but I will say, when it comes to pediatrics, when it comes to children and adolescents and even young adults, really, this is similar, at least at this point, in how you manifest the illness to other viruses that we commonly see, mm. like the flu, like rhinovirus, like paraflu. And so we're not seeing that same risk in our patient population. Mm -hmm. Now, that being said, as far as the elderly population's concerned, especially elderly people with other forms of illness, mm -hmm. it is important to insulate and protect those people. Right. Um, and so, you know, does that mean that maybe the 80 year old grandparent doesn't interact with the younger kids mm -hmm. here over the next few weeks until we kind of know more about this illness? You would say yes And to how that. to fight it. I would. Okay. Um, because I think that's kind of common sense precautions. We know that is the age group that is most at risk. The mortality rate is markedly higher in yes. people over 80 yes. with chronic disease but it's very low in the pediatric population. Now then, what do you think about all these schools closing to disinfect? So, you know, I think with the older population in mind, it makes sense, okay. but at the same time, um, it's, it's, a, it's creating really a quandary because mm -hmm. the parents who have to go to work, right? If they can't, I mean, who's watching the kids yeah. if the kids are out of school? Mm. And so then is that the grandparents watching the kids? Mm -hmm. And then the grandparents are exposed to the children and any viruses they may currently carry? Um, is it, I, I just think it's creating a difficult situation. Well, and then what do you tell kids when they go back to school from spring break? If a right. student in the classroom coughs or sneezes or, or is sick or whatever, what, what do you and tell them? And especially with all the travel that's about to yeah. occur. So what I keep telling people is, you know, the CDC and the NIH are extremely intelligent, conservative entities. And if the physicians and scientists that work for these organizations are not recommending that you don't travel mm. outside of the hotspots that we're all aware of, right. then it's hard to say that people shouldn't travel. Yeah. Um, now at the same time, you know, common sense precautions would dictate that if you're in your 80s, maybe now is not the best time to take a trip. Yes, um, especially a cruise, right? Right, <laughs> yeah. but if you're, you know, if you're younger and you're not, you know, it's it's really hard. It's I mean, my family is yeah. planning to travel next week mm -hmm. um, for our with spring break with our kids. But, you know, am I worried a little bit in the back of my mind that when I come back, that I could potentially expose an elderly person mm. if, Okay, so let's, this is a really important thing that I don't think okay. a lot of people have been talking about. 
You are most likely to get somebody else sick, regardless of the virus, if you yourself are actively ill. Mm. And by that, I mean high fevers, mm -hmm. coughing profusely, lots of oral secretions, you know, sneezing all over the place. That's when you're likely to get somebody sick. Okay. You could possibly get someone sick without having a big, um, Illness, virus shed. A big virus shed, right. but it's markedly less likely. Mm. So that's why normally we tell people who have the flu, kids who have the flu, you can go back to school 24 hours after your last temp. Mm. You know, un you need to be under 100 for 24 hours without medications on board, yeah. like anti-inflammatory medications. Oh my gosh. Um, but we don't say that you stay home for two weeks. Sure. Now, could you possibly still be shedding little bits of the virus over the next five to seven days? Yes, but you're not as but contagious. But it's so much less. Yeah. And so being actively sick, you should avoid people that are actively sick. And people that are actively sick should self-quarantine. Yeah. But like they would for the flu or like they would if they had coronavirus. So stay Sorry. home if Common you're sick. Common coronavirus. <laughs> <laughs> right. Common coronavirus, yes. yeah. Thank you so much, this is great information. Dr. Oh, Lindemann, I, I know helps. you have to get back to patients, but we really appreciate your time <laughs> you're here. You're welcome, thank you.